we have Melissa Balkin with us today, and uh, we want to talk about markets, any tips, and then we want, also want to hear about her story um, so we could get started. Um, so Melissa, tell me about your business. So I uh, run a business called Phoenix Supply Co. And what it is, is it's art, stationery, gifts, accessories, and they're all inspired by the desert in the Southwest. That's so awesome. And how'd you start? Oh man. So I started, it's a bit of a rambling story, but I started, I, I just started making these foiled prints, which I don't even sell anymore. But it was one of those things where I just f- discovered this technique and just started making random things. And slowly that turned into, I started drawing like more like cactuses and stuff like that and realized I really started loving making the the cactus themed artwork and like some like really interesting like Arizona themed pieces. Then I taught myself watercolor and that's where it really all kind of went crazy. So, um, So it was like, it was just kind of like messing around. And then slowly I kind of realized that I really loved making this artwork and stuff, particularly around like pride of place in Arizona. And so then it kind of, I kind of was like, okay, I want to formalize this. And that's when I kind of developed the Phoenix Blackco brand and it's just been evolving ever since. So that's great. What were you doing before starting this, starting this venture? <clears throat> so uh, I also run a design studio called Strong Design Studios, and I've been doing that for, um, well, it's honestly been operating for like 20 years. Uh, I'm in my 11th year of running it full time. So that was my main thing, and I, that still is actually my main thing, and Phoenix Supply Co. is kind of my passion business that I do in addition to that. My passion business that ends up taking every spare minute of my time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it can do that. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, can you tell us more about the products you offer in Phoenix Supply Co. and your other business? Yeah. So um, I'll start with the design just yeah. because it, I feel like it kind of really leans into like how I develop Phoenix Supply Co. But um, with Strong Design, we do primarily brand identity and like brand development. So we'll help people develop their brand identities and then we will help them like develop all of the rest of their marketing materials, whether it's their websites or PowerPoint presentations or flyers or whatever. So this is the background that I come from is very brand focused, very design focused. Um, When you're a designer, you kind of see the world slightly different. Like you just, you're always seeing design everywhere you go. (laughs) So when I started Phoenix Supply Co, Phoenix Supply Co is, um, I primarily sell, uh, well, I shouldn't say primarily because it's always changing because I love making things. Uh, Mm -hmm. But it started with art prints, moved into greeting cards and stickers And then I realized, um, well, it actually moved into Christmas ornaments. And that's what opened the floodgates into that I love working with acrylic um, because it's like you can get in all these cool glitters and stuff like that. So then I started making accessories like key rings. And then I moved into the earrings, which anyone knows me, I love earrings. It's shocking. It took me as long as it did to get to making earrings, <laughs> but now I love making earrings. <laughs> so, I love that. That's amazing. Yeah, and we're and always developing other things because I'm forever like, Ooh, what about this? Could I make this? Like, <laughs> and is it just you and your business full yep. time? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. When I started the design studio, I knew I only wanted it to be me. Um, just because I didn't want to lose the ability to do the creation and you start bringing the team in, then you start managing the team. Right. Um, so I love to be creating things. Um, And so Phoenix Supply Co. was like this really wonderful, more like hands-on way to create things, whereas uh, design is very strategic and it's very conceptual and strategy-driven. But Phoenix Supply Co. is this wonderful way that I could literally be like painting with my hands and assembling things and literally making a tangible object, which I find to be super satisfying. That's awesome. And how do you balance both? Your businesses. Oh, goodness. Um, I'm not good at balancing both is pretty much the short answer. Um, I kind of work constantly. I have horrible work-life balance. Um, I'm a single gal, so I think that's the way, reason I get away with this is I don't have any children that need me or a husband that needs me, um, which is uh, maybe a double-edged sword because I probably work too much. Um, but yeah, mainly I do the design like from nine to five-ish. Um, sometimes it spills into the evenings because I have a hard time saying no. Um, but then Phoenix Supply Co. tends to be like, I, I'm always working on it after hours, um, always assembling something at night or mm-hmm 
you know, packaging something for a market. Um, Saturdays tend to be like paint days, maker days, this time of year market days. So I love that. And I, mi- I miss the freedom that I used to have when I was sure. single without kids. Yeah. Cause I loved working like, yeah, I, I was kind of maybe a workaholic. Like, just I loved creating things, yeah. coming up with new ideas. So I love that. I You're totally that. get it because sometimes I think I work too much, but then I realized that Phoenix Supply Co. is my business, but it's also kind of my hobby. Like, I just love doing it, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so I'm like, yeah, people could say I work a lot, but also just my work's my hobby. Mm-hmm. Like, if I weren't selling these earrings to someone, I'd probably just be making earrings because I like to make earrings. And you you know? enjoy. <laughs> Phoenix Supply Co. You yeah. enjoy it. So it could even be more of like a self-care thing yeah. too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's strange, but one of the things I look forward to the most is when I get to assemble things. Yeah. Like I love to just put a movie on and like make a bunch of earrings. That's awesome. That sounds <laughs> Or package amazing. a bunch of things. <laughs> it's kind of nerdy, but. <laughs> I love that. That sounds great. Um, so tell me about um, your products and about the local community, because I know you do a lot of things based around Arizona and cactuses. Yeah. So um, kind of the impetus of that is, so I've, I'm not originally from Arizona. I'm originally from Michigan, uh, but I've been here for, I'm losing track at this point. It's about 20 years. Um, and there was a time about, I want to say it was about eight to nine years in, I moved back to the Midwest and I thought I was moving permanently. I felt like maybe I needed to be close to my family. Um, But about six months into that move, I was like, I got to go back. I miss the sun. I miss the desert. And so I ended up in the Midwest for about 18 months before I could get back. Um, And, but when I got back, I was just like, I love this place. I never want to leave. Like, I mean, sometimes life has different things in store for you. Who knows if I will get to stay here my whole life, but I get to choose. I'm staying here. And so I just, I love the sun. I think the desert is beautiful. Like I love the metaphor of the cactus too. Like just how like half the year it looks like this plant that's dying. And then like spring comes and it's, it's shocking how gorgeous they are and the blooms that they make and how this thing that looked dead all of a sudden comes to life. I just, I don't know. I love that metaphor. And so, yeah, that's where kind of my my passion for this business comes from is because I feel like <clears throat> when I first moved here, it was almost more of a default decision, but I feel like since moving back, it was really like, I chose that yeah. this is where I want to live. Mm-hmm. And so I'm very, I love living here. And so I love, and I know that there's a lot of other people that like have a lot of pride in that they live in Arizona and they love the desert and the beauty and the uniqueness of it. And so I love making things that those people resonate with and just help them kind of like express their love of this place too. Yeah. Yeah. And I agree. I love Arizona too. I'm from California Mm -hmm. and moving here, it was, it, it was completely different, obviously for one thing, the summer is extremely (laughs) hot. And, um, but I, I love the desert. It's so beautiful. Arizona, I just feel is so special. I don't know. It's something about it. Right. Yeah. So many people that come here, even friends, family members, they're like, Oh my gosh, it feels like I'm like always on vacation or, you know, it really, yeah. And, and I kind of feel the same. Like I love it when I go to California I feel, I do feel like I'm on vacation because now I'm visiting, (laughs) but coming back, I just can't wait to be home. And yeah, I just love it. You know, you mentioned community and that's something I didn't touch on, but that I think is actually, that's something I love about the Phoenix area is, um, you know, no one's from here. And so I feel like because no one's from here, people are very accepting and willing to take people in. Like, Mm I think a lot of people here have a lot of friend families, you know, because so many people aren't originally from here. But I think that also starts to expand it, extend into the business community too. Like I have found here, like people are just always willing to give someone a chance, which is awesome as a business owner, but for all my businesses, right? And anyone's business. Uh, I, I didn't find that as much. I love the Midwest and I don't want to knock the Midwest, but I didn't find it as much because Uh, you know, in the Midwest, a lot more people like were born and raised there and they're just, they don't know what it's like to be an outsider. Right. And so I think that that's something that's really special to the Phoenix, like business community too, is people will just give you a shot. Yeah, I agree. I do like that. 
Um, what do you feel your company culture is? Um, I know it's just you, but maybe if we think of it in a way as what's the culture you're trying to create with the people that buy your items and the branding you have? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's only me. There isn't really like an internal culture, well, except for me, however I'm feeling that day. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's a good one. Although with oh that said, I would say like, I really try to keep things positive. Like if you see my work, it's a natural fit because my work is extremely colorful and joyful. And, um, I like to describe it as like, like rainbow desert sparkle. Like it's kind of like yes, my brand in three, <laughs> my, my aesthetic in three words. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, so I like to keep things positive. Um, I really try to, um, how would I explain this? Like, I think try to have like a personal touch, mm-hmm. like, it's not possible for me to remember everyone who's bought something from me, but let me tell you, I really try, (laughs) you know, like there's so many times I'm at a market. I'm like, wait, you've come to a market before. I don't know your name, but your face is familiar to me. You know, I like, I really like want to have that genuine connection. I don't want people to feel like they're just buying some from some faceless person and that they're just a number to me or they're just a dollar amount to me. Like, I really want to connect to them as people and um, just, I I want them to understand that like when they choose to use their dollars to buy something from my business, that like, that really matters to me. And I really appreciate that they've decided to make that choice. And so, you know, I like people will you know, like, like a story on Instagram. Like I'm always going to respond. Like, and when I say respond, I'm not just going to tap the heart. Like I'm actually going to write words back to you. Yeah. (laughs) Like, because I feel like if you took your time and energy to engage with me, like I'm going to engage back with you, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that that. those things are all really important to me. Yeah. And, um, how do you stay on trend with like the, well, well, on the latest trends? Like, sure. how do you keep up with that? That's actually a really interesting question because I actually, so you, you do always have to keep your ear to the ground, right? And what's going on because there's no sense making a thing no one wants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be But <laughs> with that being said, I actually actively try not to be overly trendy. Like, I mean, I don't know, maybe desert stuff's kind of a trend and cactus stuff, but I'm not making it because it's a trend. Right. I'm making it because that is um, my concept as a business. Um, you know, I might like embrace like maybe like a, like a slightly different style or a slightly different color palette. Although like you're probably always going to see me using my bright colors because I love them. Yeah. Um, I don't care what's in style. I'm going to use the bright colors because I love them. They make me yes. happy. Um, but um, so yeah, I, I, I kind of actively try not to be overly trendy. In fact, I sometimes describe my work as timeless, which is kind of interesting because I think you think timeless, black, white, you know, beige, and mine's rainbow. But when I say timeless, I think I mean like you're going to buy it and you're always going to love it because mm-hmm. it's not it's not like it has some catchphrase that was only popular in 2023 mm-hmm. on it, you know, or that it's like some meme that just happening this month or whatever. Um, you know, I try to make things that I feel like someone's going to love because they just love it, not because it's catchy right now. And, um, so hopefully they will want it on their wall or, you know, the sticker on their water bottle or whatever, like, for a really long time. <laughs> yeah. And I have to agree. All your, yeah, all your pieces are timeless and they're beautiful. They're beautifully made. I, I love them. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And you actually, well, the reason I know how you set things up, you have a space in our stores. Yeah. Um, can you tell us about how you curate your space for our stores and how long you've been there? Yeah. So I didn't actually look up when I moved in, but I think I moved in fall of 2020. I oh, think. Okay. <laughs> Um, I think I could double check on that. Yeah, (laughs) I'm pretty sure that's when it was. Um, So I've been there for a little while now. It's been like a massive blessing to our business, my business, our, I don't know why I'm using the royal (laughs) we. Would you say you you have cats? I don't. I wish I I had a cat. (laughs) I'm sorry. I thought you said you did. Um, You might have seen me post a story of the stray that found me (laughs) and I had it for three days before I realized I'm not in a phase of life to have a cat, even though I really want one. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so I've been at the merch since I think fall of 2020. It's been awesome. I love it. 
uh, I have a little slat wall space in the back. Um, and I am like a merchandising nerd. <laughs> I probably <laughs> drive you and the girls crazy. Yeah. I am always trying to like optimize every square inch of that space. I love that. Oh, I also have a jewelry <laughs> shelf up front too for my earrings that mm-hmm. I love to make. Um, but I am always trying to like, like my motto is the girls at the shop know I've said this a million times because I keep overstock there so that they can put it out if things start running low. And sometimes they'll be like, I don't know if I put it out right. And I'm like, I don't care. Like, like, like I do care. Yeah. I have a way I like to do it. But at the end of the day, this is my motto. If it's not out, no one can buy it. Right. You're like, just put it out. I'll come in and yeah. fix it. Like, it I'm just thankful that you put it out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's like a thing for me is like, like, if it's not out, people can't buy it. And so I'm always trying to get as much product into the space as I can. But at the same time, like if you think like a shopper, if it's chaos, because I've jammed so much on that wall or on a shelf, people can't, that's not an enjoyable experience either. And people can't see like everything you have to offer. So there's this interesting balance. Well, I try to strike this interesting balance of like, fitting as much on my spaces as I can without it being hard to see everything because it's all mixed together. Yeah. So I, this is, so this is why I did talk about the design in the beginning, because like it really informs just the way I do everything. Um, so like I kind of, kind of try to keep things like organized. So like grouped together. Um, like if you look at my slap wall, slat wall, it's almost kind of like gridded slightly. So like all the greeting cards go top to bottom on one side, you know, all the key rings are kind of in like a grid. The bookmarks are below it. I try to line the bookmarks up in a way that they kind of like flow under the key rings. So like there's a natural like flow of your eye and stuff isn't just all over. Likewise, I have found that I think it's easiest for people to engage with that slat wall space. I actually feel like it's easier when the things are more like pegged and more flat against the slat wall versus like dimensional coming out like in shelves or bins that are too deep because then you start to shadow things and it starts to get hard to see things around those pieces that are sticking out and th- casting shadows. This is me being very nerdy about merchandising. No, right I love now. it. I love it. I think we're getting a lot of information. That's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> But yeah, oh yeah, that's awesome. Well, I do love your setup and I do agree. It's very clean, very shoppable because that's something I tell the vendors when they're moving in, just, you know, make it your own store, your own boutique. Mm-hmm. And and I do understand a lot of people probably, you know, they're the makers. They yeah. I, And I've heard some vendors tell me, I, Kim, I make, I don't know how to display, you know, well, levels are good, but if you're on a wall, I love what you said, you've experimented and you see that if it's flat, it sells better, right? Yeah. And it has its own little um it's space easier to see. Yep. Yeah. And to your point, I do think you have to, I mean, I didn't get there from day one, you know, like mm-hmm. in fact, actually I've, my space has changed. Like I started out on a table and then you move the tables to slat walls. And I'll be honest with you. I was a little like, I don't know if I want a slat wall, <laughs> but I love the slat wall. I'm yeah. so glad you suggested the slat wall. Um, but Changes I started good, with like, guys. just like a, a small part of a slat wall. And then I moved yeah. to the whole slat wall. Oh, yeah, and, you're right. You had so half like, of it. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. like it's definitely evolved over time and you learn more, but I, that's like another like tip I feel like I could offer people is pay attention. And if like, there's a product that you're like, why isn't this selling? I think it's so cool. Try moving it around and displaying it a different way because you would be shocked if you move something, you move it up, you move it over. Um, you try displaying it in a basket versus like on a shelf or, you know, I I don't know, but like, it's shocking how Mm -hmm. much something will sell. It'll change the sales. It'll make it sell more or make it sell less. Like Mm -hmm. I've like, had that happen a few different times where something, uh, I moved something or even something like just in the shop in general moved around. And all of a sudden I noticed like something selling more or less. So Mm -hmm. pay attention to that stuff. Like, yeah, I agree. Nerd out on that stuff. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) And I tell, um, our employees, the girls at the store, you know, they, uh, they'll tell me sometimes like, Oh, this hasn't sold. And we still have like the six pieces left that we started off with. And I always tell them, okay, before putting on sale, please try moving it to a different part of the store yep. and see if it sells. And usually it does. Yeah. Cause a lot of times it's hidden or it blends in too much. 
Um, but well, there's something these... like way cooler next to it that's like overshadowing exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe it just needs its own little space. Maybe yeah. you could admire it, right? Yeah. And or like, itself. like another example is like I've got these little cactus stud earrings that people love, and I love displaying them in a bowl in a dish because in my mind it's a candy dish because they're yeah. all different colors and they kind of are jelly and sparkly looking, and yeah. I feel like it makes people excited because first they're like, oh, cute cactus studs, mm-hmm. and then they're like. Oh, wait, they have them in pink glitter. Oh, wait, they have them in teal glitter. Wait, rainbow glitter. And it it actually stops being like, should I buy these stud earrings? And it starts being more like, what color am I going to pick? (laughs) You're right. Instead of them having their own. Yeah, it's more like, okay, I need to get a candy. I need to grab one of those. It's like an adult candy dish, right? So like experimenting with like just things like that. And I don't know if like a customer would ever describe it like that, but I feel like that. And I just feel like every time they're displayed like that, they sell really well. So. Yeah. I love that. That's awesome. See, oh my gosh, you have so many great ideas. I love it. Thanks. I try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. We are gearing up to our market of the season, which will be December 2nd. And, you know, I know you've done a lot of markets yourself and I want to hear about any trips tips, <laughs> tips and tricks that you have, um, for our listeners and people that are getting ready to do a market. Um, I feel I've done markets, um, probably, well, since I was like 20 for about 10 years, I did do markets. I did markets and I loved them, but I remember like there was trial and error with so many things, booth set up, um, and just so many things you could forget and do differently. Can you, I want to move on and, and I want to talk and pick your brain about stuff like that and what you feel, um, a successful market, how you can make your, a market successful. Sure. Well, just like the slot wall guys, I nerd out on my market setup. Um, so first of all, I want to say I, I'm not going to be at the Merchantile Market. I'm so sad. I already had another market booked that day. I am very sad. Every time you post about it, I have like FOMO. Like I oh. want to be there. So go show up guys. Yeah. But while you're shopping the market, after you're done, mm-hmm. walk over to the Merchantile shop because all my things are there. Yes. Oh yeah, you're right. It's only a few steps from our old town yeah. Scottsdale store. Yeah. So Perfect. sorry, we are not going to be there. It's going to make me sad. I'm going to be watching the videos and being like- Sad, I'm not there. So I really hope, like, I think you mentioned you're hoping to do some in the spring. Really yes, hoping yes, I can do we that. are February and March. Yep. Sweet. Mm-hmm. All right. Awesome. I can't wait. Um, okay. So tips for markets. Okay. Mm-hmm. So just like with the merchandising, it's totally a trial and error. Like, so I've been doing markets for, it's been around five years now. I, I don't exactly remember. I think my first market was in like 2018 or 2019. Mm-hmm. Um, and so my display has changed a lot since then, a lot. How did you start off? I'm curious. So I started mm-hmm. off because when I started, all I had was art prints. So I just had like four bins of art prints. It's like all I had. And then I framed some, like to show you this is what it would look like in a frame. Mm -hmm. Um, So I have a lot more things now, which is an interesting challenge to fit them all. Uh, So I'm a single person set up like lots of, there's a lot of couples that come and they like help each other set up and I don't have that luxury. (laughs) So um, not to mention my things, most of them are pretty small. So when I am at a market, I tend to have a table space, which is most, lots of makers have a 10 by 10 tent space, but I hate lugging the tent and mm-hmm. like never know how to fill that much space because like literally my largest thing is an eight and a half by 11, or excuse me, an eight by 10 art print. <laughs> that is my <laughs> largest piece. Yes. So, um, I just never even know how to fill that space. I have to do it from time to time. But, um, so, um, when I first started, I just had that six foot table and I had the, the bins of art prints. Um, but now I've got the art prints. I've got the greeting cards. I've got the stickers. I've got key rings, bookmarks, and a few different styles of earrings. Mm-hmm. So trying to fit all that out. Um, I've moved to a setup where I have um, like a riser, like a kind of tiered rack for art prints, a tiered rack for cards. And then I found pegboards to be amazing because you can reconfigure them. So uh, it used to be like I'd add a new product and I'm like, oh shoot, where am I putting that on the table? Now I got to totally rework my display. The other thing is because I'm a single person set up, like I um, am always trying to get my entire display to where I need to go, 
in one trip from the car. <laughs> that so, was our, my and Eugene's <laughs> goal. Okay. He would like put all, so many things on his arms. Like, it was oh, you got to get the like that. beach cart thing from Costco. Mm. Literally the best $50 I've ever spent on okay. my business. So anyone listening, if you don't have one of those, run to Costco yeah. and get one. Um, but yeah, I have like a little leaning tower of pizza, like, like on my way. Like I think sometimes other vendors are laughing at me because I will fit my whole table in there. My chair, it's literally stacked almost as tall as I am by the time, like I'm (laughs) making my way to my spot. So that's like a weird thing I nerd out about. And, um, I actually, I used to joke that for as much as I nerd out on this stuff, I didn't have it down to a science yet on the pack and unpack order. It always seemed like the thing I needed first was on the bottom. So I'd have to unpack the whole cart to get to like my tablecloth. Um, But I'm proud to say, I think I've remedied that for this year. I think I'm going to stack the boxes in the order I need them. I think I figured it out. I'm very nerdily excited about that for this year. But yeah, so kind of like with the slat wall, um, you want to um, be thinking about how people are taking in your space. Mm -hmm. You want it to be cohesive. You want it to be neat and tidy. You want people to be able to see things easily. You want to think about how you can attract someone's eye to your booth. Like one of the things that I know people are drawn to my booth is my card display. It's pretty big. Like it's, I think it's like maybe 30 inches wide and maybe like 20, 24 mm-hmm. inches tall. So it takes about half of my table. Um, and um, I feel like that's something that will draw people in because mm-hmm. so something I've also found with on the slat wall and on my display is repetition. Repetition is very eye-catching. So like having all those cards lined up or even like I do my key rings and I put all the colors like on a separate peg. So you see like this rainbow of key rings and it's this beautiful glittery rainbow. I love it. Um, But like things like that catch people's eye versus if I like had only like four or six cards out or I had them scattered across the table, it's like less powerful looking. And I feel like harder for someone to at a glance be drawn into something. Um, so I think that, and going high, like, like having a bit of height to your display Mm -hmm. is good because like when you're out of market, there's a lot of people around. If everything's flat on the table, that's going to be really hard to draw somebody in, Mm -hmm. um, because they can't really see what you have unless they are all the way standing there in front of your table. Yeah. Um, so I always try to have like a smidge of height, but then again, you also want to balance. You don't want to hide behind your display. (laughs) So it can only be so high that you can still kind of be seen (laughs) because, um, you do want to like engaging with people. Um, because yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, that's really smart. You do want to connect with people, which is, was going to be my next question, but I actually want to talk to you real quick or ask you about your, um, yeah. How do you save time? Do you, so how long does it take you to prep the market before? Yeah. Okay. So this has been an ongoing process also, which I feel like this year, I feel like it's better than I've ever had it. Um, for the longest time, I, um, just used like the PayPal app to process sales. But the downside of that is you can't like log any inventory or anything like that. So I used to have to like, after every single show, I'd be like counting what I had left and stuff, uh, to like update on my Etsy store. So I moved to Shopify several years ago. So that's one big giant tip. Mm -hmm. So um, you're off Etsy now? Right. I don't, oh, my Etsy awesome. shop is, uh, well, it's on vacation. It's been on vacation for like three years. Congratulations that you have your own website. <laughs> That's big. Yeah. That's it big. took me a little while to make that jump because it's not inexpensive to pay that like monthly fee. And truth, I'll just be crazy honest. Like m- my business is not, it's not giant. Like if anyone thinks it's giant, it's not giant. Like I think I sold one thing in September off my website. So so like it happens to all of us for anyone listening. I always feel like people are always putting out there like sales, sales, sales. And I'm like, am I the only one that (laughs) sold one thing this month? Your things are amazing. You know? Yeah. And just real quick, I just want to add, don't let that, if you have, if you don't sell anything online or haven't sold anything online, don't let that be like dictate that your products aren't good. Yeah. Because so many times people want to see your things in person or in stores. I don't know. I feel like I feel 100% about that. Like, yeah, I agree. They Mm want to like 
they want to interact with you yeah. or they want to maybe like see all the colors in person right. or something or just love the market experience and want to just wait to make that purchase like yes. in that environment that, you know, they just love that environment. Mm -hmm. And anyway, the reason I started talking about Shopify was that is a huge way that I streamlined my process because it has inventory and it has a point of sale app on your phone. So now I can just, when I'm ringing up sales, it just deducts from the inventory on my website and it's the most glorious thing ever. That alone is worth the dollars you pay every month, especially if you do a lot of markets. Yeah. Even if like your online sales aren't massive, just having everything connected. So that's mm -hmm. one way um, that I like streamline, streamline the process. Yeah, and then I have like bins of product and they're kind of always ready. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I have a bit of like a motto of like, I'd rather pack my booth up slowly and put everything back where it belongs rather than trying to be mm -hmm. fast. And now there's kind of chaos in my setup. Yes. And so that's one thing I do. And then when I get back to my house and I unpack my car, I usually restock everything right then, uh, which is really hard to mentally get myself to do because you're tired and you're yes. hot and you're sweaty and you just want to go sit on the couch. Mm -hmm. um, but if you wait a few days, you kind of forget what needed to be restocked. <laughs> and then it takes longer to restock it all because you've got to check everything because you don't actually have it fresh in your mind that like, oh, I just sold all my rose gold like cactus stud earrings. I got to restock those. Mm -hmm. And so I've just kind of learned just grin and bear it for like 15, 20 more minutes yeah. and restock the things that were good sellers. Um, I keep a lot of my stock actually in my garage with all the stuff. So it's also like just right there, just do it and then put everything away. And then you don't really have to think about it until I always load my car. Another tip. I always load my car Friday night. I don't load it Saturday morning. So that way, if I happen to be running late or something like that, like I don't have that craziness or the possibility of forgetting something. That way I've got the whole night to remember that <laughs> one thing that was sitting in my office, not in the garage yeah. that needs to be put in the car. Um, so that's that like getting another ahead of, ahead of the day, right? For, for yes. In your car. And then I charge my car reader. I pack mm -hmm. my snacks and stuff. I've got all that. I do all that Friday night. And then if anyone follows me on Instagram, you've probably seen my little sign to myself. I hang a sign on my doorknob that says, don't forget coffee and snacks <laughs> and card reader. Cause I will charge my card reader oh, yeah. up till the minute I leave because I don't ever, I'm like a little paranoid if you're not figuring that out by now. Um, I'm always like, <laughs> what if I unplug it and it starts to uncharge overnight? <laughs> like, so like, so I have this little yeah. sign that hangs on the doorknob to the garage, like reminding <laughs> me to take all of those things. Yeah. I'm stupid. I'm a no, nerd. That's guys. awesome. I love that. <laughs> I've been using my notes a lot and I just but like start writing random things. And I just like, even if we're going like camping or on vacation or something, I'll um, write, okay, toothpaste, toothbrush, don't forget. Like just things that I know I would forget or hair strainer, laptop. Yeah. Cause yep. I would feel like I'm not going to forget it. You know, how could I forget it when There's I'm packing? So many things in our minds have these days, Two right? kids and a husband. Yes. And um, yeah, I think I need to start writing these things. Yeah. So, write I write everything down. down. In fact, I always <laughs> tell people like, like if someone asks me to like send them something or like, you know, tell them if this color is still available or something yeah. like it's, I'm like, okay, I will follow up with you by tomorrow. But if I don't follow up with you tomorrow, it's because this never made it to my to-do list yeah. and I have forgotten. So please remind me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm totally with you. You got to write it all down. Yeah. And I loved what you said about, um, you know, after the market, you just want to hurry up and get home. You just want to yeah. pack things up. And I get it. I was guilty of like, babe, just throw everything in the bin, throw everything yeah. in the car, let's go. But I did find when I would take my time and just enjoy my time there and, you know, because a lot of people are in a hurry. A lot of yeah. people want to get yep. home, they're tired, they want to get out of there, is um, just enjoy the process yeah. and the process of setting up, getting there early. Yeah, I always get know? there as early as they will let yes. me because I'm like, I don't want to be rushed. You what if something doesn't click together the way I thought it did? I've had before, like... I had one time, it was the silliest thing. I somehow like, I was going to a market that I go to all the time and I somehow like missed my exit and went way past it. And I literally was like a 15 minute detour. I'm like, this is why I leave early. Yes. Uh -huh. This is why I plan to get there yes. the first time they let me. Mm -hmm. And the other nice thing is if you take your time um, packing up, you also avoid that whole like, 
everyone's cars are trying to take the 10 available spots to yes. load, load yeah. up. So like, exactly. if you just are slow, by the time you're loaded up, it's like, you don't have to fight for a spot anymore. But yeah. then again, I'm also stupid and I tend to just like walk my stuff all the way to my car because I'm one of those people. It's like, I don't want to walk to the car just to like, like, yeah, it's the same, 20 feet it's the and- same amount of walking. <laughs> yeah. So why don't I just do the one walk with my car? Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's smart. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. And yeah, you know, those 20 minutes like that you get to sleep in, if you're, you're going to be rushing, mm-hmm. it's not worth it. Yeah. Just wake up. Yeah. <laughs> not to ready. mention like market organizers, like it makes them nervous when like that spot, yes. it's like 30 minutes before the market's supposed to open and no one's there. Like yeah. That makes them really nervous, understandably. And yeah. I just don't want to be that person, Aww. like causing that You're drama so for sweet. a market. <laughs> but I just, I want to be the vendor that's yeah. easy to work with, you know, because yes. like, you just want to, I don't know. I want to be a good vendor. For yeah. The I love I that. And with. that's also like being a good person person you know yeah. you're being a good person you you're um thinking about others and yeah I appreciate that well and you because- know what and if you're set up early then you can help people too like because sometimes yeah. you get someone who it shows up and their husband couldn't mm-hmm. come with them and now they're trying to set up this 10 foot tent all by themselves and they're not used yeah. to doing it all by themselves mm-hmm. so it's like you can help people I've had somebody before who like they were in like an unlevel ground spot which pro tip like keep a couple wedges of wood in your trunk at all times in case you've got to level your table. Mm -hmm. Um, But like, so I had to run back to my car and get them my wood planks, you know? But, and if I'd been like down to the wire, I couldn't have helped them with that, you know? Um, So I love that. Be of service guys. Yeah. Let's help each other out and, you know, just do what we can. Which truthfully market, like makers are the best people ever. Like Mm. I have always found like makers to be people who will always try to help you. Yeah. I love that. Um, what are some tips for um, for connecting with customers? How do you connect? How do you connect? With customers? Yeah. Okay. So I feel like particularly with what I do with like the artwork, it's really important to connect to customers because they love knowing they met the artist, like that they talked to the artist, they bought this from the artist themselves, and so like for that reason, so far I have never like sent a representative to a craft show because. Um, I just kind of feel like no one wants to buy my art from some other random person, you know? So I think that's like something to consider is your, is your product like really unique, like attached to you? If so, you probably need to be there. Um, at least if you want to maximize your sales. Um, but I think that, um, there's this interesting balance as a shopper at a market. I never want to be I never want to feel pressured. And so it's taken me a little while to learn the balance of engaging without making someone feel watched. Right. Um, And so usually what that looks like is like, usually I'm kind of talking to everybody. Like I'll just like say hi to people as they're walking by, which by the way, it's a wonderful way to get them to come over your table. Um, Some people won't, they'll kind of give you this outside. I like, I don't want to come to your table. I don't want to say hi to you. (laughs) Like I know your game, <laughs> I know, like, hmm. but some so people them down like they're like in this weird zone. They're like looking at something in the distance. They're talking to their kid or in a conversation with their spouse or whatever. And they don't actually even see you're there that you're walking past you. Mm-hmm. And so if you say hi to them, they're like, all of a sudden they see you there. And I can't tell you how many times people have been like, hi. And they do this like momentary hesitation. And then they come over like, oh, I didn't even like, I almost walked right past you. And actually- I now see these cards and I need some cards or what's this sparkly thing? I love sparkly things. Like, um, so like engaging with people even before they're to your table, but, um, pro tip, like don't take them away from another vendor. I have had that happen before. We're like, uh, there's one market that I'm at and it's, these the sweet couple, but they do this like kid giveaway thing. Uh-huh. And sometimes I feel like there's like a customer walking towards my table and they'll be like, Hey, do you want, and I'm like, can you let him come to my table first? Like, <laughs> hey, don't forget about me. I'll yeah. be here. Like, like, can you, can you talk to him after they've looked at my things? Like, so don't so do that fun. either. Like, don't be t- taking customers from another person's booth. Even if it's in a sweet way. Yeah. <laughs> like, I love what these people do if yeah. they're listening. But, <laughs> um, but like, just like saying hi to people and how are you? But like, not in a pressureful, like, come look at my things yeah. way. Um, and then like, when they sh- like come up to your table, well, kind of same thing. I always basically try to say hi to everybody, unless for some reason there's like a big swamp and I'm like, engaging with one person, but usually even if that's the case, like 
once I finish engaging that person, I'll be like, oh, hey, how are you? You know, um, but just, just usually it's just, oh, hey, how are you? And then I just kind of let them be. Yeah. And I try to like busy myself with something. Yeah. Just not make them feel watched. Don't hide behind your display and like pop out because that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> make it so they can actually see you're there from the beginning. <laughs> um, but like, I also feel like uh, just kind of paying attention to what they're engaging with. But don't be salesy. But I tend to have, a, I run market specials and I will not, I think I've got, that's smart. This is my first market of the year is this Saturday. And so like, I'm trying to remember all the things I do, but I believe I have signs, but people don't always see signs. And so one way that I engage with people in a like non weird way is like, if they're looking at the cards, so like here would be like a flow of a transaction, right? Like they're kind of walking by and I'm like, oh, hey, hi, how are you? And they're like, they see my stuff. They kind of walk over. And so like, maybe it's high first. And then they kind of come to my table. I'm like, how are you doing today? And they're like, I'm doing good. And then they start picking up cards. And when they start picking up cards, I'll be like, hey, we've got our cards, you know, uh, three for 12 today. Um, and you can mix and match all the designs. They're all blank inside. And so, but I won't say that unless they actually start looking at the right, cards. Right, unless they pick them up or yeah. take them show Because why it. am I going to like bother them with all of my deals and sales unless they actually show any kind of interest okay. in the thing I have the deal yeah. or sale. So if they but show if, interest, I'll give them more information. Yeah, because you can, like if I told everyone all the things I had in sale the second they walked up, they'd be like, deer in a headlight, <laughs> like glazed over look like, excuse me, what? Like, so I try to tell them like, as they're looking yeah. at things. Um, so yeah, but that's also a great way to like keep an interaction going in a way that's not salesy. It's mm -hmm. more, it's, um, informative. Yeah, yeah. It's informative. You're trying to like, I see you're looking at the cards FYI, in case you didn't see the sign, we got a deal on those today, you know? So like, you know, here's a, if you wanted cards, like here's a deal. Cause you have no idea how many times like people are looking at card and they pick out one or two. And I'm like, Oh, did you know they're three for 12? So you can basically get one for two bucks. Like yeah. <laughs> that's smart. Yeah. And I love what you said about being approachable. Like I always, I always wanted to, you know, make sure people felt like seen and acknowledged. Yeah. So as soon as they're, or even if they're walking by, hi, good morning. Yeah. You know, and don't be on your phone and right. don't be grouchy. Be happy. Yeah, People want to engage, guys. but like try to find it in your depths to be authentically happy, <laughs> yeah. not fake happy. But don't be looking at your phone the whole time. A, yeah. you're going to wear it on your battery. You don't want to do that. Uh, but B, like, no, it, like who wants to engage with like heads down phone person? Like yeah. that's a wonderful way to be ignored at a market. Yeah, that's true. Um, so what would you do like if a market is um, really, really slow? What would, <laughs> what do you, have you had those markets? Yes. I have had those. That we all is have. extremely <laughs> discouraging when that happens. It's very frustrating. I am like, I just feel like I'm a business owner at the core. Like I, I turn everything into a business. And so like, it's very hard for me to just sit there. Cause I'm like, I could be doing so much more with this time. Like it's so hard for me. It's hard for me to stay positive. Um, mm. But try to stay positive try not to get like super pressury with people because I feel always feel like people can kind of feel what you're feeling. So try not to get stressed about it. Try to just know it happens. It happens to the best maker. It happens. I've had it be where like, it's a market I've done a bunch of times. And then just randomly ones like one time is like super crazy dead, you know, like mm -hmm. it just happens. Uh, I sometimes take that as an opportunity to really get to know my booth neighbors and make some new friends <laughs> and share war stories and yes. like learn some things. Um, shop your other vendors. Yeah, uh, help each other out. Uh -huh. uh, what do you do? So every now and then I have also like done an impromptu sale, especially if there's mm -hmm. like, like a holiday specific thing that I have, like a seasonal thing. Like sometimes just randomly in the middle of the market, I'll just be like, all right, well, we're going to put these on sale today just to try to like encourage some extra sales. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. What about a really crazy busy market? How do you manage um, all those customers that you have at your table if it's just you alone? Yeah, um, I uh, I don't have like a like specific busyness strategy, mm -hmm. but I would just say um, 
I try to say hi to everybody Mm -hmm. as best as I can to make them feel seen, you know? Um, I try to, you know, it's an interesting balance because I don't want people to feel like a number. I don't want them to feel like you're just a sale to me. Like, like I want to like be talking to them as we're checking out. Like if they're telling me I'm buying this for my sister, like I want to actually hear that and acknowledge that and not just like have those words go through my head and Mm -hmm. not. So um, I try to engage, but I also kind of feel like if other people standing at the table see you engaging like with somebody who's checking out, like I feel like hopefully they think positively of you and maybe have a little more patience because they can see like you're really trying to like handle each customer with care Mm -hmm. and not just treat them like a number. Um, So honestly, I've got really amazing customers. I haven't had a major problem with it. Usually people are pretty patient or they come, they'll come back around. The other thing is I do actually um, try to set up my table so that people can kind of access it, not from all sides because I'm behind it, but I try to like make it so like the edges aren't blocked so that like people can kind of shop from a radius, you know? Yeah. And that's another good thing of like having your display have a little bit of height because then people can start to maybe even see something like over someone's shoulder or something. It's not all flat on the table. Yeah. No, yeah, I like that. And I feel, yeah, it just goes back, even if it's a crazy busy market, just acknowledge your customers, yeah. look them in the eyes and say, yeah. hi, I'll be right with you if yeah. you have any questions. Yep, totally. In the meantime, you could browse, Yeah, you know? Yeah, I love that. Well, is there anything else you want to add or anything you, we forgot to talk about that pertains to markets? Hmm, let's see. Yeah, I can't. And any advice you want to give people coming to? I think, I think probably my best advice is to really try to be strategic. Oh, actually, I remember something I wanted to talk about. And that was like pricing. Mm. I think it's important at a market to have multiple price points because sometimes, and I feel like I, I watch this happen a lot that people are really drawn into my aesthetic, but like maybe they don't need an art print. They don't know where they would hang one. They love them, but they're like, I don't, as much as I love Mm -hmm. interacting with you as a person and I love what you stand for and this art is beautiful, I don't know where I would put it. So I can't buy this today, but they might buy the water bottle sticker, you know, or it's somebody who just like doesn't have the budget to buy like a $40 item or a $50 item. But like, what can you like create that's authentic to your brand that's something that always kind of drives me nuts when people just bring random stuff like (laughs) that. Like you're like, huh, how do we get from like (laughs) signs to like crock charms or something like that? You know, like like, how are these two things connected? Um, So like be authentic to your brand, but try to have at least one item that's a lower price point. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like an entry point for someone who might like really love you and your brand and your aesthetic and what you're doing but maybe it doesn't have the space for some, one of your other items or know what they would use it for, or they're really on a budget this month or whatever. I think that's a really good tip to have a, a range of price points. Um, I like to run some market specials. It helps people, it helps draw people out because they can only get the special at the market. Mm-hmm. Um, and then probably the other, the last thing I would just say is like, be strategic and pay attention. Don't just flop your stuff out. Like, pay attention. If no one picked up that thing that you think's really cool, maybe try putting it in a different spot next time. Or maybe your price is just a tiny bit too high. It's crazy what even just like a dollar in price can do. Like psychologically, like $20 might feel expensive, but 19 might feel cheap. And mm-hmm. that's not that great of difference mm-hmm. in terms of profit. Um, and that's the other thing is pay attention to like your profit and stuff like that. I I do sometimes feel like as makers, we're creatives and we don't like to think about, um, the business side of things, Mm -hmm. but like, there are some markets that I have realized, like they might be a market that's like very like sensationalized, but it's actually when I really do the math less profitable for me than maybe like the smaller under the radar market. And you don't know what works for you. What works for like your friend, they might sell twice as much as you. Like you might just, the reality might be that that market you realize isn't a fit. And if I can do a plug, actually have a little tool that I built to calculate your profit. It's available on my website. There's 
in the shop tab, there's like a maker tool section. It's the only thing in there. But I developed this tool for my own self because I started realizing this. When I started doing the math of like backing out the booth fee and the gas mileage to get there and things like that, when I really started thinking about what it cost me to be here and then looking at that in the context of the sales, like figuring out what truly was profitable. Um, so- Oh, I love that. Do that um, math. Pay so, attention. Yeah, that tool. So they could find it on your website. Mm-hmm. What did you tell us your website? Uh, it's phoenixsupply.co. Okay, that's awesome. Um, and guys, just as a reminder, our market, our Merry Merchantile Market is this September, December 2nd, 2023 at Scottsdale Civic Center. It's so beautiful. Have you seen how they redid it? I've just been seeing your videos and it looks awesome. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's on 3939 North Drinkwater Boulevard in Scottsdale, Arizona. And if you can't make it there, we do have our shop open seven days a week um, in Old Town Scottsdale. We are the Merchantile. We also have a second location in Phoenix. And that address is 730 East Missouri Avenue in Phoenix. So just visit us. Um, but yeah, but thank you so much, Melissa. Yeah, I you're really enjoyed talking to you. I feel like I have so many more things to ask you and like we could bring you back. <laughs> I would be happy to come back. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you.